Siri is your intelligent assistant and helps you get things done just by asking. And we're going to talk to Google's research experts about speech recognition technology. It begins by giving TV a new voice, yours. And we've built a core speech recognition engine. Put on the pro-quality headset that comes with it, and in minutes you'll have your computer at your command. The exact words I say aren't important. It's the meaning behind the words. So I could ask this in a completely different way. As you can see, computational linguistics is currently an extremely relevant field. Over the past few decades, the subject has expanded past the boundaries of research and academia and into the commercial realm. All of the algorithms used today wouldn't exist without the use of our basic linguistic theories. First, we'll start off with a quick overview of the top-down, bottom-up parsing strategies we learned earlier in the semester. Let's take a look at the sentence, book that flight. For the top-down approach, we always start off with the sentence S. From there, we know it can build from structures such as noun phrase and verb phrase. A verb phrase by itself or others. Applying these rules to our sentence leads to a best fit with the S verb phrase rule and additionally shows that the other are incapable of correctly modeling it. We proceed to break down the sentence further, this time looking at the different combinations of phrase structures that can make up a verb phrase. The best fit in this case is verb phrase to verb and noun phrase. Using this recursive technique to deconstruct the sentence into its most basic phrase structure yields the final tree. Meanwhile, in bottom-up parsing, you start with the parts of speech from the bottom of the tree and use the rules to join words together and then join combinations of words. As you can see, there are multiple subtrees being constructed at each level. What about parsing on this sentence? Ari saw a baby in the park with a telescope. Let's see what happens when we apply a top-down parser to it. For saw a baby in the park, there are two possibilities of this verb phrase, verb and noun phrase, or verb phrase and prepositional phrase. Either Ari was in the park when he saw the baby, or he saw a baby who was in the park. With a top-down parser, we are only guaranteed to get one of the correct sentences, or we get distinct trees that don't explicitly show the ambiguity. Moreover, the tree structure can't represent sentences that are not completely parsable, leading to trees with no roots, and so on. Finally, they could be inefficient because subtrees have to be generated at each step. Both top-down and bottom-up parsers have these problems. The solution to these problems is to use a special kind of parser called chart parsers. Unlike before, these store all intermediate trees into a chart. Using the example sentence, the young boy saw the dragon, we first break up the sentence by its word boundaries. The algorithm goes through all possible linear combinations of words, starting from the leftmost. Note that only half the chart gets filled up because no combination ends at a word that appears before the first word. We don't want backward combinations. Then the chart gets filled with the parts of speech and then the phrase categories. In order to construct the corresponding tree structures, branches are constructed for elements to the left of and below the current node. How does the chart parser handle the ambiguous sentence from before? Ari saw the baby in the park with the telescope. Unlike before, when all the grammar rules matched up, here we see overlapping rules for ambiguous parts of the sentence. For the NP from 2 to 10, a baby in the park with a scope, this can be de decomposed into a baby, noun phrase, in the park with a scope, prepositional phrase, or a baby in the park, noun phrase, with a scope, prepositional phrase. Under both of these formulations, 1 to 10 then becomes a verb phrase with a verb and a noun phrase. As you can see, chart parsers handle this by drawing lines for each possibility. Probabilistic computations attempt to correct for ambiguous sentence and factor semantic meaning into syntactic parses. For example, the sentence John ate pizza without onions and John ate pizza without hesitation could be classified under the same syntactic tree, but the second one wouldn't make any sense under the first tree. Instead, we can factor in probabilities to different combinations of non-terminal tokens. There are some key things we can remember when constructing these probabilities. All probabilities of a non-terminal token should sum to 1, and all probabilities should be non-negative. There are many other algorithms out there. This is because parsing natural language sentences is an unsolved problem. 
and might never be completely solvable because of the ambiguities and pragmatics involved in real-life language use. The more modern algorithms attempt to model the way humans parse language, which is still unknown, and apply that to a new computational model. However, as we have all experienced with using automated systems, Siri, and so on, parsing algorithms still have a long way to go. What's the buttons? Oh no, they installed voice recognition technology in this lift. I heard them at us. Voice recognition technology? In a lift? In Scotland? You ever tried voice recognition technology? No. They don't do Scottish accents. Eleven. Could you please repeat that? Eleven. 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 Could you please repeat that?